Well, a delight to be with you again and to talk about this uh, wonderful theme of spiritual rest and how to experience it. Uh, if you're listening to this, it tells me that, you're, that you desire uh, spiritual rest. In fact, let me describe the person who's interested in spiritual rest, and that's the first one, is that they desire God's best. So they have a desire that God's put in their heart. They desire God's best. But you know, I'm going to give you two other words. Uh, and with each word, uh, the crowd gets a little smaller. Uh, there are many people who desire God's best. But you know what? They're willing to live without it. But it's not only desiring God's best, but also it's a person who is determined to get God's best. Um, you see, listen, listen to um, the psalmist in Psalm 27.4. He says, one thing I have asked from the Lord. Now, he desires it. That's why he's asking. But he goes on to say, one thing I've asked from the Lord, that also I shall seek. See, he's not just desiring it. He's determined to get it. Uh, determination is a Christ-like quality. You see it in our Lord's life. Um, when his disciples turned to him and he hadn't had anything to eat, but he tells them, he says, I have food to eat that you know not of. To do the will of my Father and to accomplish his work. He was not just desiring to do the Father's will, he was determined to do the Father's will. So, who, who is the person who's interested in, in spiritual rest? It's the person who desires God's best, it's the person who is determined to get God's best, but there is a third description. It is this, it's the person who has learned they cannot live in the strength of their determination. If you look into the D word, it's the word desperate. They desire God's best, they're determined to get God's best, but they're desperate because they've learned they cannot live in the strength of their own determination. Their own determination is not enough. Well, if that's the person who wants it, the person who desires God's best, determined to get God's best, and realizes they can't live in the strength of their determination, in that sense, desperate. How do you get it? Well, you respond to God's promptings to seek Him. God is sending things into your life, into my life, to encourage us to seek Him. God is at work in our life. Um, God is at work in our life. Philippians 2.13, He's at work in our life, but the willing to work for His own good pleasure. He's working. Okay, so you say, how is He working? You see, He entrusts you with fears. Those fiery darts of fear are thrown at you. He entrusts you with the temptations of anxiety. It's not a sin to be tempted. No, you'll struggle with that. Uh, he, entr he entrusts you with what? Sometimes uh, dealing with your frustrations the wrong way and being tempted to be angry and, and he allows you to be tempted and all these things. But these are his call upon your life to seek him. Those who respond to God's promptings to seek him get the answer. That is the road to spiritual rest. The psalmist says, I... I sought the Lord, and He delivered me from my fears. Uh, the, the direction is, don't be anxious, but what? Don't stop there, but what? Turn your anxiety into conversation with me, and tell me what you want me to do about it, and don't forget to thank me, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Well, you see, God is prompting you to seek Him. Why does He prompt you to seek Him? Because God wants to prosper your life. It may not feel like it when you have these things in your life, the fears, the anxiety, but no, remember what God said of the ancient king. 2 Chronicles 26, 5. As long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. You don't seek God in a vacuum. I don't seek God in a vacuum. It's God sends things into your life. And as you respond and follow this prompting to seek him, that is the pathway to spiritual rest. I'll, I'll close with this simple little illustration. It was on a Friday afternoon, and I was tired, and I was worn out, and my responsibilities was done. And so I was walking to the train. As I was walking to the train, just a real sense of burden came over me in regard to situation. And my, you know what my, my first response is, God, I'm so tired, I, I'm done, I'm off, I'm done, I don't want to seek you. But God worked on me, and even though I didn't want to, I turned into this restaurant. And I was single at this time, so it really didn't matter when I got home. But I went to this restaurant, no one knew me, and I, it was a cold winter day, and I sat at that counter and I ordered a cup of hot tea. Well, I had seven cups of hot tea that day because I sat there for a while. And I took out a sheet of paper. And you know, I still have that sheet of paper. And God gave me one of the most precious convictions that I cling to even to this day. And I remember writing on the top of that sheet of paper, Lord, 
Show me the goodness of every burden that you entrust to me that encourages me to seek you. Did I want to seek God? Not really. I didn't. I sort of resented even having to. But you know, as you respond to God's prompting to seek Him, it's, it, that is the pathway to spiritual rest, and that is the pathway to true prosperity of your soul. Let's bow for prayer. God, would you give us the grace to respond to your promptings today to seek you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.